What up, everybody? It's your boy MMACs. We're gonna get into some UFC 249 fight predictions um, and just overall a little bit of discussion about what's going on here. Uh, as you guys may have well heard, the UFC 249 will be going on. Um, it's gonna be happening on Saturday, May 9th, 7 p.m. Pacific time at the V Star or Via Star Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, United States. And if you're following uh, the news, uh, Florida is one of the states that decided to reopen basically pretty much fully um, and resume their lives amidst uh, this global pandemic, which some places are not even even considering opening up soon. So um, the UFC was scrambling, and we all kind of remember the mess that was happening a few weeks ago trying to put on events during the pandemic at pretty much the peak of things shut down. Uh, they were going everywhere and it was getting to the point where they found a location in Lemoore, California and I've been in California 20 years never heard of this place in my life but apparently it was at a, a reservation which is sovereign land um, and they were gonna host the event even without having a sanctioning body there or having uh, because if as you guys know um, UFC events in the United States have uh, different commissions that are represented by the state that sanction these fights from happening or else they would be deemed uh either not on a record or it'd be you know it's like just how boxing is it's it's how you make fighting legalized uh it's like legal fighting so essentially they um they did not have the good graces of uh the california commissioner and um they were going to host it anyways but apparently uh, some important people high up called higher ups called up disney and disney called um disney espn called Dana White and told him that we're not going to, you guys can't have the event and we're not going to air it. So, um, he backed down and, but we're back. It's May 9th and it's going to be May 9th. It's literally about eight days from now. We're going to have this event, UFC 249. Um, it's really great to know that in a situation where the unemployment is exploding and so many people, over 17 million people are basically uninsured and, you know, what, six, whatever million people, um, 10 million, however the number is, uh, don't have jobs at all and, we are going to have a $70 pay-per-view coming up. That's going to be really great. Um, but I know this is going to blow the roof off numbers. Pay-per-view is going to be great because that's <sighs> the world we live in. So I'm not going to be a hater. Let's dive into this. I'm going to start. Where should I start? Should I start with the prelims? Let's start with the prelims here. Um, I'm not going to go early prelims because I'm not a savage in these streets. Like I'm, and I've, I don't really have any intention of talking about Ryan Spann versus Sam Alvey. Um, if I, I still can't believe Sam Alvey wins, like it, no, but, uh, Bryce Mitchell, I know that dude, that's the, that's that, um, hmm, how do you say it? That's that, uh, country fella who, um, like eats squirrels and stuff like that. And he, he apparently like cut his balls or something one time. That, that was crazy. Uh, Bryce Mitchell, Google him in the, the bloody thing. Yeah, it was, it was a wild story. Vincente Luque versus Nico Price. Um, I think, I think Vincente Luque. I, I, I just told I just told you guys I wasn't gonna do predictions for the early prelims. Here I am. The only reason is like Nico Price has the weirdest body in human history. Like he has, he has like the longest arms I've ever seen in my life. Um, he's an interesting looking fella. Um, I'm gonna go. He he's one of those guys that beats you because he's so awkward and like it's just yeah. He's built well. He's built like he's supposed to be a 6'10", like, guy, but he's not. You know, like, they have, like, basketball players have some, like, crazy wingspan and legs. He looks like he was supposed to be like that, but he's, like, in regular human size. It's pretty pretty wild. Um, Vicente Luque is a very tech, has very technical. Um, I'm going to go technique over uh, awkwardness, even though someone like Nico at any given day can just, uh, can, uh, yeah, surprise you and hurt you. So I'm going to go Vicente Luque. You know, shout out to him. So, here we go. This card is, I will say this, this card is stacked. And apologies, I have allergies today. If my cat is it's murdering me. Um, this card is stacked. Right now, uh, we're going to start with the first prelims uh, card. Uh, it's going to be Uriah Hall versus Ronaldo Souza. Um, A.K.A. Jacre. Um, big Jacre fan. Um, also, he's a Souza. How to rep my people. But um, I'm going to have to go ahead and think he demolishes Uriah Hall. Um, I don't know why Jacare fell to 14th. It's pretty insane to think about. Whoa. Um, like, how did you? How did Jacare fall below Uriah Hall? Number 14th rank? 
I don't UFC rankings are just bonkers, but yeah, um, uh, Uriah Hall. You know, Uriah Hall was definitely that dude coming up. Uh, he was a highlight machine. He was he's so dope. Like, he's so much fun to wa- watch to fight. Now he's um, intense and just like with his style, just all oh, he knockout artist. But as of lately, I know he got a win recently. He's prone to get his ass beat, and especially when it comes to that takedown life. Uh, Jacare is is a legendary jujitsu. Excellent wrestling and good boxing. I think that Jock Ray is going to make this uh, uh, un, uh, not a very fun contest for Uriah Hall. And I think Jock Ray is going to get that win um, pretty easily. I'm going to say second round. Carla Sparza versus Michelle Watterson. Uh, Carla Sparza infamously knows one of those first, first strawweight champions off of that tough um, season. But I'm going to go ahead and go Michelle Watterson. Although Michelle Watterson uh, recently... Um, uh, lost to Joanna Janjacek, but um, she's one of those people that, like, you're only going to beat her if you're, like, the top three, the top two. Like, strawweight is super stacked right now. Those those top three, top four strawweight women, I, unfortunately, it's to be hard for Michelle to win. But I think against someone like Carlos Esparza, no disrespect to her, I think, like, for I think Michelle has this win. Ale- Alexi Olenek versus Fabricio Verdum. Fabricio Verdum, two things about this Brazilian. Number one, wild career, legendary career. Uh, he, one of my favorite highlights of his career is when he threw the boomerang at Kobe Covington, who was talking shit on Brazilians. They were in Australia and he threw a boomerang in his head. That's one of the best moments of all time. And Kobe Covington did nothing, which was great because we all know how uh, that clown, uh, uh, dude is. But Alexi Olenek is, 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 uh, is, um, uh, incredible grappler. He has some insane submissions. This is actually going to be a really good fight. Like I am excited for this. Uh, Fabricio has been on a break for a while due to a, he pop he popped positive for steroids. Um, he's back though. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. Oof, I'm gonna go Fabricio. You know they're both pretty. I feel like they both match up pretty well. But I'm just gonna go ahead with the guy with the more decorated accolades. I guess you know um, he's a former UFC champion. When two people match up, I'm just gonna go Fabricio. So Fabricio Verdum with this. And the next fight is, uh, this is this is a battle between the two dudes who have just been, it's been, uh, they're definitely, um, how do I say this? I don't want to be mean. Like, they're definitely uh, Antonio Pettis versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone. This is definitely like peak 2000, 2010 right here. This is some 2010 beasts right here. Some 2000, early 2010s. These guys were it, you know what I mean? Cowboy, obviously, legendary career from just taking fights all the time um, with barely any time to prepare. Losing and winning, losing and winning, losing and winning. You know, he's he's uh, he's had quite the career. And Showtime Pettis, I mean, probably you could say in terms of celebrity, probably one of the biggest UFC fighters early going in terms of him getting on the Showtime, he get him getting a Wheaties box. He's known for that infamous video of him running up the cage and kicking people in the face honestly i'm not even going to talk about that because i feel like every single time we bring that up and that's what we talk about this man is a former ufc champion uh he did knock the hell the hell out of stephen thompson um uh that was incredible so this this fight here i'm gonna keep it so real donald Cerrone's number six for lord knows what reason but and Antonio Pettis, Antonio, what's wrong with me? Anthony Pettis is number 15 ranked. I think Anthony Pettis is going to sleep the hell out of Cowboy. Um, I just, like, I don't, I don't, I don't see this being, I don't see this being, like, I think Cowboy's beyond done. Uh, I wish I could kind of talk about the whole Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith thing. And, because, you know, we, we talked about this on the, on the show where the Joe Rogan was basically saying that, and, and a lot of people were saying that what Stephen A. Smith said was disrespectful about Cowboy versus Conor McGregor. And Stephen A. Smith said that in that fight, Cowboy quit. He wasn't there. I kind of agreed with Stephen A. Smith. You can't tell me in that fight that Cowboy was in it to win it. I mean, I get it. Like, I've never been shoulder checked in the face and been tested to come back from that. But I think that. This man is, we've seen his career. Like, it's not like we're looking at a first-time event. This is someone who has a story career of many, 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 many fights in the UFC. The most winning UFC fighter of all time. So we've seen him over and over. You kind of get a gist. And what, it, is it because you like the person or not? You kind of get a gist of 
if they give up or not, you kind of know what they're, they're, they, they do in these situations. And in that situation, you can't tell me that he was giving it his all. I mean, not in terms of like not trying to fight, but like, I don't, I, like when he got hit, either the lights was too bright as in the past many times we've seen Cowboy when it's time to get it cracking and, and to big time, he doesn't really show up. He doesn't, he's, he's a shell of himself. And he even admitted himself on ESPN with Air Hawani show that he just wasn't there. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't all the way there. So, I mean, he, he, we can argue about it all day, but the man kind of said it for himself how he felt during all that. So, I got Anthony Pettis winning that fight. Uh, I think he's going to knock him out. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, granted, I'm pretty sure Cowboy, uh, Cowboy is very happy to be on prelims at a main card, you know. But I think he's going to he's gonna get that. And it's on ESPN, that part. And then, of course, we switch over to the main card, which is going to be on ESPN Plus. I'm assuming pay-per-view. Yeah, you got it's on pay-per-view, so it'll be a nice amount. This is what's getting wild here. Um, this is... Greg Hardy versus Jorgen De Castro. Now, if I look this up right, Jorgen De Castro is South American. I think so. Well, I do not need to know about his Tumblr. What the hell? Let me look this up. Jorgen De Castro. No, he's not. I forgot. He's Cape Viridian. He's Cape Viridian. Shout out my fellow Lucifone. EIE. You know, uh, um, he's gonna fight Greg Hardy. Uh, who's just still on this path? Um, Greg Hardy was a, definitely you could tell as, a, as an as an athlete, probably make some pro pro progressions and is improving. Part of me tells me Greg Hardy can win this, just because in heavyweight anybody can win. It just takes one punch, you know. It just takes you, you just one punch and knock somebody out here, um, and they're not gonna go to the ground. But. I remember Jorgen had an incredible knockout last fight. He fought somebody. Who was it? Oh, yeah. He fought um, Tuivasa. He fought Tuivasa, the Australian. Knocked the bejesus out of him. And I can't imagine Greg having better stand-up than Tuivasa. So I'm gonna, and also because I'm really biased, I'm going to go Jorgen de Castro. Jorgen? How do you even say that in Portuguese? Yo. Is it Jorgen? Jorgen? I don't even know. But anyways, fellow Lusophone, fellow Portuguese speaking, um, African, uh, Jorgen de Castro. I got that's my pick. I'm biased. I don't give a damn. Um, uh, that shout out. I mean, that Jorgen de Castro forever right here. Um, Jeremy Stevens versus Calvin Cater. Um, I'm gonna go Jeremy Stevens. I think one time I tried to watch a Calvin Cater fight, and I'm not trying to sound mean. I just don't really remember. Um, I don't really remember. I've seen Jeremy Stevens fight too many times. Um, I'm going to go Jeremy Stevens is a beast. Francis Ngannou versus Jazino Rosenstruck. Um, that's a great name, Jazino. Um, I believe we have another. No, 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 not another. But Jazino. He's. Is he Suriname? He's from Suriname. That was really funny. I don't think enough people talked about how when Overeem versus Rosenstruck was made. That was an interesting fight because Rosenstruck is from Rosenstruck is from Suriname, and um, Overeem is from the, is Netherlands. It's from the Netherlands. Obviously, if people know history, Suriname was a uh, was um, uh, what is a was a Dutch colony for the Netherlands. So we have a lot of people there uh, from Suriname that immigrate, you know, uh, and and have. Uh, play sports like for example it's in terms of like this in world soccer a lot of people are from Suriname and they end up playing for for a, they end up being having Dutch citizenship and they play for the Netherlands it's, it's kind of a big thing I remember one time he they didn't really get into it but I remember Jocelyn talked about how people in Suriname were like kind of like do this for us you know what I mean and I remember somebody shut that down. Like, oh, no, like, that's not true. Like, that's not what we do. I was like, that's kind of cap. I think that they do do that. I, I don't I know how I am. And I, I know how some people are probably, especially on the, like, I don't know. I guess people like to keep this relationship. I know some of these countries that were, were colonized, like, even Cape Verde at some point by, you know, like, Portugal and, and, and Suriname by the Netherlands. They're probably like, you know what, man? Like, do do this for us, and we're not playing soccer. We're gonna fight. So go ahead and uh, 
you know, go go get that win for us. Go get go get that win for us, buddy. Uh, Jarzion Biggie Boy, his name is Jarzion Biggie Boy Rosenstruck. Biggie Boy, go go get that dub for us, man. We need that. We we need that. <laughs> So I think that's what happened, um, and he did. He knocked he knocked out uh, Overeem, who's still one of my favorite fighters of all time. Knocked him out at the very end of the fight. Incredible knockout. But that's not what we're getting to. He's gonna fight Francis Ngannou, and I'm gonna keep it a stack with you. I'm gonna keep it a stack with you. I think Ngannou is gonna break the just blast through this dude. Ngannou is sensational, sensational fighter. Should be a UFC, should be, it's ridiculous he's fighting again, um, not for a title. The reason is because UFC is a bunch of clowns when it comes to these titles. And we're sitting here in limbo waiting for, for, for Daniel Cormier to fight um, uh, uh, Stipe Miocic. Like we're just waiting for this fight that no one is really asking for. But the UFC is given to Cormier because they love him so much. It should be Francis Ngannou fighting uh, Stipe for rematch. Francis has blown through some some uh, Curtis Blades and 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 he beat um, yeah. So he beat Curtis Blades. He's had some recent wins. He deserves to get back to the, the, he gets back to the title. Like he deserves that. Like he's got his two wins to get back to that position. But here he is fighting Drazen Rosenstruck, who is also a knockout artist. But if two guys are just beasts at knockouts and and, and 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 fighting and and just they don't we have to worry about we don't you don't have to really worry about the ground game. I have to give it to Francis every time because his speed, power, athletic like that speed and power he has and like size is just gonna I'm gonna take that over someone who has power and speed but at a smaller size. I'm just gonna have to take that like that's where I'm gonna have to lean towards. When it comes to two people who have power, like what do the mechanics look like? So I'm gonna go Francis and Gano, uh, um, rep, rep in Cameroon. So go ahead. Um, this is where it gets interesting to me. Now I've been listening all week to the next. This is the main main event, of course, but the main card. But this is the the the, the two the the championship fight, which is um, Henry Cejudo versus Dominic Cruz, who looking wild in this picture. Um, it's pretty crazy to think about this because. Henry Cejudo beat also one of my favorite fighters of all time, um, Demetrius Johnson, who I still think is the greatest fighter, one of the greatest fighters in the world, is still who's still fighting, but he's fighting in um uh, uh um he's fighting in one championship over in Asia, um one FC or whatever they're called, I think they're called one FC, one championship, I don't know, but um yeah he they're over there. Henry Cejudo is just managing to dodge all the the legit bantamweight fights. The bantamweight is pretty deep um, because obviously Dillashaw, when he tested positive, he's put on two-year hiatus. And it's funny. I'm just going to let you guys know this right now. Only because of... Uh, of damn, can I do this? Only because of this, um, Dillashaw is straight up going to come back and they're going to kind of forget about the steroids. I, sh I, I promise you. To this day... We still get hit with picograms about John Jones, even though those statements. But trust me, Dillashaw, they're gonna forget all about that, and, be, and they're gonna be like, "Oh, even though he popped test positive, he tested positive for EPO," <clears throat> which to me, like, say what you want about different kinds of steroids. So he was taking something that was gonna make, give him increased stamina. That's OP. That's 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 aimbot and fear gamer. Like, come on, dude. So he tested positive for EPO. Got stripped of his title and sat for two years. And he's been doing this occasional crybaby tour, going around and acting like, you know, like nothing happened. So just know he's going to come back and no one's going to press him. Nobody's going to press him. Trust me. So, yeah, T.G. Dillashaw, you know, the Bantam weights were cracking for a while. We had Cody Garbrandt smoked Dominic Cruz. That's one of the best championship performances I've ever seen in my life was Cody Garbrandt versus Dominic Cruz. I mean, he, he smoked Dominic Cruz. And if those know Dominic Cruz, he's a legend. He's a legend at a bantamweight. Um, just a beast. Um, sh training out of SD. Shout out, Bam. But yeah, he's going to be fighting Henry Cejudo. I mean, he hasn't fought in three years. And he jumps right back into a title position. It sucks because people like Aljamain Sterling, I think, are more than deserving for a... a uh, fight because the last fight Henry Cejudo had was against Marlon Moraes and he beat him and I I believe no 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 yeah yeah it was and then Marlon recently fought uh, Jose Aldo 
Um, and jo- he beat Jose Aldo, which I didn't think he did. I thought Jose Aldo won that fight. But, um, yeah, so I think that it should have been Aljamain Sterling. I mean, you could have even argued Peter Jan should have been there. But, yeah, I don't, I don't really know the process of how people are getting title fights other than whatever the, the, the championship champion feels like getting. So he matched up with Dominic Cruz. I know a lot of people are talking about how Dominic Cruz has this very – movement-based style, and that's going to be problems for Henry Cejudo. I think last week, or the earlier in the week, I agreed with that. I think Monday, I was like, you know what? That's a good point, because people who I take highly, I, I highly respect, I mean, some of the shows I listen to is Luke Thomas show, and, and Morning Combat, and Man in a Hat, and A-Side, and, and uh, you know, Eurobash. Like, I agree with some of the guys are saying, and a lot of them are saying that, but... I'm gonna keep it real. I think Henderson was gonna bust the doors on on Dominic Cruz. The last time we saw Dominic Cruz, he was getting smoked by Cody Garbrandt. I'm gonna keep it real. I don't like Cindy Cejudo like all that much. I think he's kind of annoying. When I watched him against Dillashaw, like when he hit TJ, I mean, is that 125? TJ felt that joint. That that joint hurt. Like that was some power there. He's a wrestler. He's small, but he got some. He's like that 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 uh, muscle hamster strength. Like that. That's. I mean, he's an Olympic gold medalist. Like this dude is for real. Um, and regardless of his wrestling, he has really good power. Like that was some speed and power he has, and good coaching. After watching the, the Cody Garbrandt fight with Dominic Cruz, like Dominic Cruz is known for all the speed and fainting, but if Henny Sudo is notoriously known. For having really good camps, really good trainings. And I just think that Henry Cejudo is going to really blast through Dominic Cruz. I don't think it's going to be like, oh, it's going to be problems. I think a lot of people are predicting Dominic Cruz is like, I think Dominic Cruz might be even a favorite. Let me see here. That's not even odds. Okay, well, UFC's website is literally broken. They don't have the record for Dominic Cruz. Drunk website. Um... Yeah, I think Tenny Cejudo's going to win this. Uh, Cejudo, he has speed. He's speed and he's like bunched in that, you know what I mean? Like Dominic Cruz is length, but I think Cejudo knows how to get in there. He has good boxing, good technique. I think he just, he can get in there, blast in there. And if it's not working on the hands, I think that Cejudo can end up be a pest wrestling because wrestling someone bigger than you is annoying, but wrestling someone that's smaller than you with more compact strength is to me even worse. That that That's, that's, ridiculous like wrestling with someone small on you was like and more and has that that built-in power that's hard to deal with hard to submit somebody with shorter arms and 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 more of a a together frame it's hard to really like get in there and just like unwind on somebody and get arm bars and stuff like that compared to dominic cruz who's very lengthy compared to him so i'm gonna go henry cejudo um if you can come off a three-year layoff and just destroy a champion and dude like i mean obviously you're already a legend like you're ridiculous and this champion sucks. Like three years off, dude. I'm like, imagine getting off, not riding a bicycle for three years, and then being like, yeah, I think I'm just gonna like sign up for this marathon, or sign up for a triathlon. Like, you know, like it's not easy. Like, it's a lot. It's a daunting task. But um, that was a terrible analogy. But uh, Henry Cejudo for the win. Now this is the one here which kind of bugs me. Um, we have another lightweight interim title bout, Tony. El Kukui Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje is wild and so much fun to watch. This dude is literally a blast to watch. I, I don't think I'm, he's had a fight in the UFC where he didn't get fight of the night, winning or losing. He's a blast to watch. He's a he's too much fun. He's fighting Tony Ferguson because, as we all know, the Tony Ferguson versus Khabib fight fell apart because the UFC just just does not know how to. Do the, they don't know how to be patient? The UFC has no patience because when the money be calling, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta just, they gotta, they gotta get to work. So unfortunately, um, that fight fell apart. You because Khabib is stuck in Russia. He can't fly out. He can't go to fight. He can't go to Fight Island. He can't do any of that cool stuff. I guess. And Tony Ferguson is gonna now fight with Justin Gaethje, who is more than deserving. I mean. To me, the ideal ideal setup for the lightweights, which is the most deep division, other than like strawweight's pretty deep too and all that, but lightweight is bopping right now. 
um, Tony Ferguson versus Khabib as like a main card, and then like Justin Gaethje versus Connors as the as the co-main. Ooh, ooh, that part would have been the greatest one of the greatest like main events in UFC history. But we never gonna get that. We never got that. Um, so they have an interim title. It's gonna be his second interim title fight for Tony Ferguson. Hopefully he wins this and doesn't get stripped of it again after three months or five months. Um, he, and uh, we all know he tripped on a cable and tore his ACL, so they stripped him of his title. Lord Jesus is so mean. Um, but Tony Ferguson, who I've talked extensively on a Fistic Arts podcast about, this man has... This man is... Uh, I really hate to say it, but it's it's concerning. A lot of his behavior is concerning. Um, it's a, I think it's ticking. The time is ticking until something big happens. Um, and hopefully it's just, I hope it's nothing bad. So Tony Ferguson is going to be coming out and fighting against Justin Gaethje. I think that a lot of people actually predicting Justin Gaethje because Tony Ferguson likes to get hit. Like that's kind of his thing. I mean, whether he has good technique and he works on his craft, he's very awkward. He's a beast. He can take hits. But the thing is, is when you're a fighter that like you get into fights and you always take hits in fights, you would think that no matter how good your chin is. One day, it's going to catch up to you, and one day, you're going to hit somebody that hits extra harder than the last guy. And when that guy who hits a little harder than the last guy hits you, hmm, it's interesting. <sighs> Tony Ferguson hasn't lost since, since 2012, I believe. I'm going to go Tony on this one, but I have no, I have, I would not be shocked if Justin Gaethje won this. Like, I'd be like, well, eventually, it, it catches up. And I'm going to say that, I'm going to be real, that, that would suck for Tony Ferguson, because He's never had the legit title. He's had an interim before. He's, if he gets another inter, another interim, that's like whack. But like, it just sucks that like, you know, he's the product of the system where they tell you go out and fight, go out and fight, just go and fight. He's done that. He's undefeated, and he's been robbed and had not had a title. Only had one title shot before this. Actually, he never had a title shot other than the interim one. He won the interim belt, but he's never had a legit legit title fight. So. That's a damn shame. Um, Tony Ferguson has done everything for this company. He kind of got played heavy over the years. And I think that some of the anger he has towards the media, I hope a lot of the more that's directed towards the UFC because that's a man who's been robbed. He's been played and robbed. Uh, now he's 36. And we'll just see what happens. But I got Tony Ferguson over Justin Gaethje. Uh, but Justin Gaethje for sure can get a crack in. For sure Justin Gaethje get that dub. It's not nothing that he's that's not possible for him. Yeah. So that's the UFC May 9th, um, 249 uh, fight card. Apparently, UFC is going to have two other events, I believe, within seven, nine days, something like that. So it's going to be, I don't even know what the hell is going on with that. We don't have those announced, but we have this one. So what what the hell? Uh, yeah, that's the event. It's your boy, MMA Seas. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll be doing more of this. I had an older video I made. I was going to edit it, and then I got lazy. So I need to learn how to edit. Um, but I'm just going to post this raw, straight up. Uh, please go to WeMadeItPodcast.com if you're also into soccer, um, football, foosball, the world sport. Uh, we talk a lot. I talk a lot in there with my boy Bam. We're on there. WeMadeItPodcast.com. And also I'll be streaming on Twitch. Uh, we made it C's is my Twitch handle. I, I Right now during this pandemic, I'm streaming Monday through Fridays. So catch me on there. Uh, playing an assortment of games. Primarily Apex, FIFA Pro Clubs. Stuff like that. Um, yeah, come check me out. And, of course, you got to check out some of my friends on there. Uh, Mufasa Taquitos, that's my boy. Uh, my brother, love him. He's on there, too. Uh, yeah, so check us out. Um, hope you guys uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. And if you're creeping at night and going out, I, I won't snitch on you. But be good. Love you guys. Peace.